Welcome back to Spectrum on Radio 1. Tonight we're looking at the topic, the Electoral Commission calling off local council elections in Kampala following massive irregularities and violence. We're looking at what happened today and in the parliamentary and presidential elections. The question, what measures should the country take to have a robust electoral system? Our guests tonight, Honorable, uh, we have Miss Molly Naweka Mukama, Head of the Voter Education and Training Department at the Electoral Commission. She's been with us from the start. Mr. Livingston Sewanyana, Executive Director of the Foundation for Human Rights Initiative. We have also just been joined by Honorable Mike Sebaru, Member of Parliament at the East African Legislative Assembly. You most welcome, Honorable Sebaru. Yeah, thank you very much, Edmond, and uh, I'd like to say good evening to all our listeners out there. And I want to salute my colleagues in the studios, and I wish, I uh, definitely know we are going to have a very fruitful discussion regarding this very important and topical issue. All right, you heard about the uh, <coughs> fracas regarding the elections. Well, how do you read into this? Yeah, uh, thank you my, very much, Edmond, and uh, I do appreciate and respect the views that uh, have been well articulated by my colleagues. And my take on this is that, um, uh, one, I want to salute the Electoral Commission. I think they took um, a very important and serious decision to, 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 to cut short the process of election lest it could have degenerated to more chaos and uh, other problems. So administratively, I think that was the best thing to do, so that then the issues that have been raised are fully investigated. Uh, and what I want to, to say is that uh, the investigative machinery should take on the people involved uh, in this uh, fracas and, and, and bring them to book. Uh, but... Um, I hasten to add that uh, we, we, we do have errant people, we do have people with criminal tendencies, and uh, the, what happened should not be taken at institutional level. Rather, we should look at the people involved, have them investigated thoroughly, and corrective measures are, 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 are mented on them individually in terms of the, the, the omissions and commissions that they may have committed and they, they may have led uh, to, 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 to this problem. But I just want to react on something that uh, my brother Sewanyana raised regarding the deployment during the presidential and, and parliamentary election. Um, um, that, that deployment, in my view, uh, was from a security perspective, and they never interfered with the electoral process. Uh, most of them were located in strategic areas where they could uh, come in to check any security threat, because there is something we need to appreciate as Ugandans. Uganda is under threat from terrorists. We've had a terrorist attack in less than six months, could be thereabout, and definitely you know how terrorists do operate. They always look for big numbers, and an activity like an election where many people are congregating in, in various places could be very attractive for them. So the country and the government still retain the responsibility of ensuring that security threats are checked even when we do have elections. And <clears throat> talking about security deployment and intimidation, I definitely do appreciate that Tanzanian ha Tanzania had elections uh, hardly a year ago. Uh, there was nothing like a deployment because they have enjoyed stability, but there was deployment in, uh, in, in Pemba and in Zanzibar because of, uh, again, the threats there. But it is surprising because if we are to use this logic, Tanzania had 41 percent turnout, voter turnout. Very low. Uganda had 59 percent voter turnout. So if you are going to use that logic of deployment causing intimidation, how then do you balance it with our neighbor who didn't have deployment and voter turnout was only 41 percent? Right. So when we are doing these matters, there are issues of national interest and common good. And I think the security of Ugandans is an issue of 
common good. Wherever, whatever we are doing, that must come paramount. As long as those deployed don't disrupt or don't interfere right. with the processes like they did in the presidential. So I think we should be able to commend like a process of voting that went on without serious security challenges, yet we know that we are blacklisted uh, within the region right. regarding security threats. So I think that is something we need to appreciate, even from a human rights point of view. I think it is everyone has a right to life, whether in election or not election. So I, I, I thought that I should underscore that point so that we appreciate some of these aspects. All right. Listeners, you'll be able to call in later and ask questions to this gentleman and lady uh, or make comments and uh, general contributions. I'll read out the telephone numbers when the that time comes. In the meantime, though, if you have a question, you can send it by text. Our text code is Spectrum 7197. That is, type the word Spectrum in your phone browser, leave a space, message, question, comment, uh, name and address, and send it to 7197. Madam Kamukama, what can we expect between now and the rerun? It's not uh, a rerun, really. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's a, not the new a, election. a rerun. It no, is a, a postponement of an election, yeah. and uh, fresh elections will be arranged. What can we expect between now and the fresh elections? Uh, first of all, the materials that have already been uh, out there cannot be used again. So the commission has to plan again to put in place materials for voting in Kampara. That is one. Number two is that we have to conduct these elections within the constitutional deadline of 13th of March. That is... That means between now and 13th of March, the Commission will have to announce a day and conduct the elections Before in Kampara, the 13th of March. Before the 13th of March. Because that is the, 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 the 12th. Yeah, I mean, the, that's the, 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 that's right. the constitutional okay. re requirement. Uh, the Commission is, is confident that uh, we are going to do more planning, we are going to do more well-trained uh, personnel deployment in Kampara than the rest of the country, and ensure that when those elections are held, they are not interrupted. Because what we found out with, uh, of course, this uh, issue of ballot staffing did not happen across the city of Kampara or the entire district of Kampara there were fewer polling stations that were affected. But within those very polling stations, there are Ugandans who should enjoy their right to elect their leaders. So if we had uh, taken a decision of cancelling those very few polling stations or many polling stations, it would have uh, affected maybe the outcome or maybe it would have caused more chaos. So we, this is not the first time. To us as a commission, this is not the first time it is happening, we of course apologize to the Kampara people for not having this election as had been planned, I'm sure. Of course there was a public holiday, many people left their, their work, workplaces to go and vote and they couldn't vote. So we apologize as a commission for that. But as far as handling the election, that's our business and we have handled these elections in, in such areas. And I'm sure you know Zimbabwe, you've heard of Kabari. Kabari at one time was a, a no-go zone. Capture at one time they killed our returning officer and it was a no-go zone for the, for the commission. But we've, it's, it's, it's a political temperature. It's a political situation. It, it happens maybe in local uh, elections, maybe at parliamentary level. It happens in various areas. And when that happens as a commission, we go back to the drawing board and put in a mechanism which should ensure that every voter in that constituency, in that electoral area, enjoys his or her right of vote and without interference and intimidation. And the issue of ballot staffing, of course it is unfair to uh, the, the, the candidates participating, assuming it is a, a staffing on one side, I mean, the other one loses out because it, 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 it doesn't favor him. So. Every participating political party in electoral process enjoys the same right, equal rights. The, every citizen participating in an election enjoys equal rights. So if there is a mishap like it has happened in Kampara, we will put mechanisms in place and we will handle that election like we did with Zimbabwe, like we've done with Sronko now. Uh, you, you don't hear a case there. The chairman has been running up and down like we've handled, sorted, sorted out Kabari 
for 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 some time now it has always been our uh, biggest challenge so Kampala people should should take heart the the prudent decision was to cancel and postpone this election and go to the, back to the drawing board and see that those who have tried to mess up the election are investigated and prosecuted and uh, punished as the law requires so uh, on, on the part of the commission uh, what we can assure the country and people who live in Kampara is that this election will take place and we will ensure that they enjoy their inherent right of erecting their leaders. Let's talk about the ballot the papers and some of the other issues. The ballot papers are printed locally or uh, abroad? Uh, that we will take a decision. First of all, as a commission, we have a free-fledged printery and it has, we've always handled by-election ballot papers here in the country and at our our headquarters at our printerly. So Kampala is not a big uh, so area, so we, we can do that. We can, we will put mechanism in place. Of course, we will also inform the political parties involved in this election. They will be brought on board, and they will be part and parcel of the planning and uh, monitoring of this election. All right, let's talk uh, about the printing. Yes, I wanted to comment uh, a little bit when they said all oh, this ballot papers. Ballot paper stuffing can happen, in most, in most cases it happens at actually at the polling station. When they open the black ballot box, which, they, which we send materials in, yes. and then there are these transparent ballot box. What happened, for example, at uh, National Theatre is that the presiding officer did not wait for the law, the, the, the procedures to, to, to happen whereby you're supposed to open when there are five voters.